I'm John of Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to explore Logic's Vintage EQ collection. If these EQs look familiar, that's because they're modeled on some of the most coveted hardware of all time from a sort of tone processing point of view. And what we're going to do is have a quick look at the behavior and the ways that these work because they're very different to Logic's own channel EQ. So what we've got first of all up here at the top is the Vintage Console EQ. What this allows us to do is to work across four separate bands. We've got a low shelf down here at the bottom, or a filter, in fact, I should say, which allows us to uh, get rid of uh, low frequency content below a particular point. And by default, you'll find that that's switched off so that you don't automatically lose a kick drum or the bottom end of a track if you're working with a sound that's got some bass component. Then what we've got is a low shelf here with a low gain control, allowing us to modify up to 20 decibels in either direction and a low frequency sort of uh, frequency chooser down here at the bottom where we've got a dial which allows us to move between these uh, highlighted positions. We've got the same thing uh, for a mid point of view, but with a bell curve here uh, rather than a shelf, which allows us to just focus around a particular group of frequencies. And then we've got a high shelf as well, as well as an output um, sort of drive control, which is going to allow us to boost some volume. So let's just have a look at how we might be able to shape a hip hop loop using the vintage console EQ to start with. So you can hear that that mid frequency in particular is going after that sort of snare drum sound, giving us a lot more rasp when we boost it around this sort of bell curve here in the middle. Whereas we've got a chance with this sort of low frequency area to really go after the kick drum, adding much more purpose to it at around 110 hertz. Just to show you what happens with the low filter, what we can do when we punch that in is actually we can scoop out quite a lot of content from the bottom end, either just sort of sub frequencies below 50 hertz, or as we bring that up, we'll really hear the bottom end really roll out. So you can really hear that sort of sculpting the bottom end. Okay, what we're gonna do now is close that one down and instead what we'll do, in fact, we'll just bypass it before we close down its window, is we'll bring in the vintage uh, graphic EQ. So this is based very much on a kind of American um, EQ console. And this is very much like a graphic EQ, which allows us just to sort of go after tone controls in a much more straightforward way. Here, we can just go through, pick the frequencies we like and either turn them up or down. So again, we might add some low frequency into the kick drum here in this sort of low area. We might then choose to scoop a little bit of the harshness out of the um, uh, snare sound here and maybe just to roll a little bit out at 1k as well. So here what we're doing is creating a sort of bias around the bottom end. And certainly of the three vintage EQ processors, this one is by far and away the most straightforward. So again, let's just bypass that and close down its window. What we've got here at the bottom again is a very familiar EQ design. Let's just um, unbypass it so we're actually going to hear the way that it works. Now, in particular, what's interesting about this particular model of EQ is that we've got, again, we've got um, different bands available to us. But in particular, what's notable about the design of this one is that we've got both a low boost and a low attenuation, in other words, a cut at what appears to be the same frequency. So here, what we can do is to choose the frequency and then decide how much to boost and cut. Now you'd think effectively by boosting and cutting by the same amount, you'd achieve a sort of zero sum game that nothing would really change. But actually this particular trick, which is used uh, particularly in hip hop and in, in, in a whole range of musical genres where we're sort of looking to sculpt bottom end, is that actually whilst the frequency appears to be the same because we've got one uh, frequency chooser here, 
what actually is happening is that we're boosting and attenuating on almost sort of consecutive frequencies. So rather than being exactly the same, what we get is this really interesting little quite resonant spike down at the bottom end when we perform this particular trick. So what we have a chance to do is to sort of try and see if we can carve out a more interesting kick drum sound using both boost and attenuation at the same time. And you can really hear that. We've got loads more character and punch in this particular frequency area. And again, what we've got are controls for the mid area and the high frequency as well. So the Vintage EQ collection is very interesting. It models some of the most coveted um, tone shaping hardware really of all time. And it allows you to sort of start processing sounds in ways that have been actually underpinning hit records for the last 50 years or so.